Hello everyone, I'm Dana Rose Ardilac Rose from BSED1D and I'm going to discuss the respiratory system. The human respiratory system is a series of organs responsible for taking oxygen and expelling carbon dioxide. The primary organs of the respiratory system are the lungs, which carry out this exchange of gases as we breathe. It has many parts that work together to move oxygen throughout the body and clean out waste gases like carbon dioxide. Our respiratory system consists of all organs in our body that involve in breathing. The main function of our respiratory system is to transport air into and out of our lungs, protecting our body in any inhaled particles that can harm our body, and the most important is the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide inside our body and also means breathing. Breathing is the process that brings oxygen into our lungs and moves oxygen through our body. Breathing starts when we inhale air into our nose or mouth. It travels down the back of our throat into our windpipe which is divided into air passages called bronchial tubes. Breathing provides the oxygen needed in cellular respiration to make ATP from glucose. Breathing also rids the body potentially toxic carbon dioxide. Mechanics of breathing. In mechanics of breathing, we have two. The number one is inspiration. Inspiration or inhalation is the process of taking air into the lungs. It is the active phase of ventilation because it is the result of muscle contraction. During inspiration, our diaphragm contracts and the thoracic cavity increases in volume. This decreases the intra-alveolar pressure so that air flows into our lungs. Inspiration is the phase of ventilation in which air enters our lungs. It is initiated by contraction of the inspiratory muscles. Air is flowing into our lungs. Our chest is expanded laterally. Our rib cage is elevated and our diaphragm is depressed and plotted. Our lungs are stretched to the larger thoracic volume, causing the intrapulmonary pressure to fall and air to the flow into our lungs. Number two is expiration. Expiration or exhalation is the process of letting air out of the lungs during the breathing cycle. During expiration, the, regular, the relaxation of the diaphragm and elastic record of the tissue decrease thoracic volume and the increase of the intraalveolar pressure. Expiration pushes air out of the lungs. Expiration is the phase of ventilation in which air is expelled from the lungs. It is the initiated by relaxation of the inspiratory muscles. Air is leaving our lungs, our chest is depressed in lateral dimension, is reduced, our rib cage is descended, and our diaphragm is elevated and dome shaped. Lungs recall to a smaller volume. Intrapulmonary pressure rises and air flows out of the lung. Good day! So for today's lesson, we will tackle about the respiratory system. So let's start! We all know that when we breathe, the air goes in our lungs. The air enters the human body through nose drills, which then passes through the nasal cavity. This air is filtered by specialized hair-like structures in the nasal cavity called cilia. The cells of the nasal cavity secret mucus which helps to trap the dust particles and blocks it from moving ahead. The nasal cavity also provides warmth and adds moisture to the air. The nasal cavity opens into a much wider cavity called pharynx. It is the common passage for air and food. The pharynx has cartilage that we call epiglottis. This epiglottis closes the windpipe when we swallow the food. Follow of pharynx, there is a region larynx. It is also known as Adam's apple for boys. From here, the air passes through a 4-inch long tube-like structure called trachea. It is often referred to as a windpipe. It is observed a structure many C-shaped cartilaginous rings present on the trachea. The functions of these rings is prevent collapsing of the windpipe close to all the lungs and trachea or the windpipe divide into two tubes, called the bronchi. The single tube is called bronchus. 
each of these tubes enters respective lungs. On entering the lungs, each bronchus divides secondary bronchus and divide into final tube called tertiary bronchi and much final bronchiole. Bronchiole are statemently enters in a cluster of tiny air, like a structure called alveoli. Alveoli is surrounded by blood vessels. Let's now discuss the lungs. So first, what is lungs? Lungs is a group of organs and tissues that work together to help us to breathe. Did you know that our right lung has three lobes, which are right superior, right inferior, and right middle? And our left lung has two lobes, which are left superior and left inferior. Our lungs are protected by a rib cage and it has gaps in between because it has to contract and relax because without gaps, it cannot breathe. And the last component of the respiratory system is muscle structure, also known as muscles of respiration. These muscles surround the lungs and allow the inhalation and exhalation of air. The main muscle in this system is known as the diaphragm, a thin sheet of muscles that constitutes the bottom of the thorax. It pulls in air into the lungs by contracting several inches with each breath. In addition to the diaphragm, multiple intercostal muscles are located between the ribs and they also help compress and expand the lungs. The respiratory system has a complex physiology and is responsible for multiple functions. There are multiple roles performed by the respiratory system, pulmonary ventilation, external respiration, internal respiration, transportation of gases, and homeostatic control of respiration. So, what is the functions of pulmonary ventilation? Pulmonary ventilation is the main process by which air flows in out of the lungs. This is done through the contraction of muscles as well as through a negative pressure system that is accomplished by the pleural membrane covering the lungs. When the lungs are completely sealed in this membrane, they remain at a pressure that is slightly lower than the pressure of the lungs at rest. As a result of this, the air passively fills the lungs until there is no more pressure difference. At this point, if necessary, additional air can be inhaled by contracting the diaphragm, as well as the surrounding intercostal muscles. During exhalation, the muscles relax and this reverses the pressure dynamic increasing the pressure on the outside of the lungs and forcing air to escape them until both pressures equalize again. What is external respiration? External respiration is a process that allows an exchange of gases to take place between the air located in the alveoli and the blood that is traveling through the capillaries. This is possible through a different pressure between the oxygen and carbon dioxide located in the air, and the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood. As a result of this, oxygen from the air is transferred to the blood, while carbon dioxide from the blood goes into the air. The useful oxygen is then carried out throughout the body, while the carbon dioxide is dispersed through exhalation. So what is internal respiration? Internal respiration is a similar process except it involves gas exchange between the blood in the capillaries and body tissue. Again, a difference in pressures allows oxygen to leave the blood and enter the tissue while carbon dioxide does the opposite. Transportation of gases This function of the respiratory system enables oxygen and carbon dioxide to travel throughout the body to wherever they needed. Most of the gases are carried through blood attached to transport molecules such as hemoglobin, although blood plasma will also have a minimal content of gas. Almost 99% of the entire oxygen found in the human body is transported by hemoglobin. And the last physiological role of the respiratory system is the hemostatic control of respiration or in other words, the body's ability to maintain a steady breathing rate. This is term apnea.
this state should remain constant until the body has demand for increased oxygen and carbon dioxide levels due to increased exertion, most likely caused by physical activity. When this happens, chemoreceptors will pick up on the increased partial pressure of the oxygen and carbon dioxide and set triggers to the brain. The brain will then signal the respiratory center to make adjustments to the breathing rate and depth in order to face the increased demands. Hello, I'm Normie De Sixto. For today's video, I'm going to discuss with you the respiration and ventilation. Respiration is a process in living organisms involving the production of energy typically with the intake of oxygen and the release of carbon dioxide from the oxidation of complex organic substances. What is the significance of respiration? To be able to answer that question, I want you to answer one question. How do we get the energy to perform all activities in our daily basis? Most of us will answer from the food we eat. Right, but that is half truth. The food we eat is the source of energy, which means that the energy is stuck inside the food. In order to derive the energy from it, the food needs to be broken down, and this requires oxygen. And that theory explains what is the importance of respiration when we are going to get the energy that we need in our daily basis and expounds that the respiration is the process in which food is broken down in the cells with the help of oxygen to release energy. What are the types of respiration? The types of respiration are the internal, external, and cellular. The internal respiration is the process of diffusing oxygen from the blood into the interstitial fluid and into the cells. The external respiration refers to the process of exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide in the lungs, gills, or other tissues exposed to the external environment. Cellular respiration refers to the process of converting that oxygen along with glucose into ATP, a molecule that cells use to store usable energy but creates carbon dioxide. Is respiration same as breathing? wrong because they are different respiration is way far from breathing because it is a process in which we broken down into cells with help of oxygen to release energy and breathing does not involve breakdown of food molecules inside the cells in fact breathing is purely the exchange of gases Therefore, the activity of inhalation and exhalation is breathing. Thank you for listening. Now, take a deep breath because we're moving on to the next topic. Lung volumes are also known as respiratory volumes. It requires to the volume of gas in the lungs at a given time during the respiratory cycle. A number of the volumes can be measured by spirometry tidal volume, inspiratory reserve volume, and expiratory reserve volume. Changing thoracic volume. The muscles associated with the ribs are responsible for the ventilation. Inhaling requires a set of muscles called muscles of inspiration. The muscles of inspiration include the diaphragm and the muscles that elevate the ribs and the sternum, such as the external intercostals. The diaphragm is a large dam of skeletal muscles that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. Forceful exhalation requires a set of muscles called the muscles of expiration. The explanation of the image at the screen is at the end of the normal, quiet expiration, the respiratory muscles are relaxed. During the quiet inspiration, muscles of the inspiration contract increase the volume of the thoracic cavity. Contraction of the diaphragm causes the top of the diaphragm to move inferiorly. Contraction of the external intercostals also elevates the ribs and the sternum to increase the thoracic cavity volume.
The largest change in thoracic cavity volume is due to contraction of the diaphragm. Expiration occurs when the cavi thoracic cavity volume decreases. During quiet expiration, the diaphragm and external intercostals relax. There are properties of the thorax and lungs cause them to recoil, recoil into a relaxed state. There are several differences between normal, quiet breathing, and labored breathing. During labored breathing, there is much greater increase in thoracic cavity volume. All the inspiratory muscles are active, and they contract more forcefully than during quiet breathing. Also, during labored breathing, the internal intercostals and the abdominal muscles contract forcefully. This decreases thoracic cavity volume quickly and to a greater degree than during quiet breathing. Pressure changes and air flow. Two physical principles govern the flow of air into and out of the lungs. This depends on the place where a person is. The breathing of one person flows on the accurate part of it where the pressure only differs when thoracic according to its volume. During inspiration, plural pressure during inspiration occurs for two reasons. First is increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity results in a decrease in plural pressure because a change in volume affects pressure. As the lungs expand, lung recoil increases, increasing the suction effect and lowering the plural pressure. The increased lung recoil of the stretched lung is similar into the increased force generated in a stretched rubber band, and that is the second. The events of inspiration and expiration can be summarized as First, during inspiration, plural pressure decreases because of increased thoracic volume and increased lung recoil. As plural pressure decreases, alveolar pressure decreases and air flows into the lungs. Second, during expiration, plural pressure de increases because of decreased thoracic volume and decreased lung recoil. As plural pressure increases, alveolar volume decreases, alveolar pressure increases, and air flows out of the lungs. Example of lung recoil is if a girl is putting an air balloon using her breath and then she wants to move out the air from the balloon. That's how a lung recoil works. When you exhale, the shape of our lung changes and when we ex inhale, it also changes like a balloon. Surfactant faction. First is lowering surface tension at the air liquid inter interface and thus preventing alveolar collapse at end expiration. Second, interacting with and subsequent killing of pathogens or preventing their dissemination. And modulating immune responses. Plural pressure means that the force acting to inflate the lung within the thorax is generated by the opposing elastic recoils of the lung and chest wall and the forces generated by the respiratory muscles. Changing alveolar volume Air moves into and out of the lungs due to changes in alveolar pressure. Alveolar pressure change is due to alveolar volume changes. Alveolar volume changes result from changes in plural pressure. Respiratory volumes and capacities. Spirometry is the process of measuring volumes of air that move into and out of the respiratory system. Spirometer. It is the device that measures this respiratory volumes. Measurements of the respiratory volumes can provide information about the health of the lungs. Respiratory volumes. It is the measures of the amount of air movement during the different portions of ventilation. Respiratory capacities. It is the sums of two or more respiratory volumes. 
the total volume of air contained in the respiratory system ranges from 4 to 6 liters. Tidal volume is the volume of air inspired or expired with each breath. At rest, quiet breathing results in a tidal volume of about 500, 500 milliliters. Inspiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be inspired forcefully beyond the resting tidal volume. It is about 3,000 milliliters. Expirato exp expiratory reserve volume is the amount of air that can be inspired forcefully beyond the resting tidal volume. It is about 1,100 milliliters. Residual volume is the volume of air still remaining in the respiratory passages and lungs after maximum expiration of 1,200 milliliters. The tidal volume increases during physical activity. The increase in the tidal volume reduces the inspiratory and expiratory reserve volumes. But total lung capacity stays relatively constant. Vital capacity is the sum of the inspiratory reserve volume, the tidal volume, and the expiratory reserve volume. It is the maximum volume of air that a person can expel from the respiratory tract after a maximum inspiration about 4,600 milliliters. Total lung capacity is the sum of the inspiratory and expiratory reserves and the tidal and residual volumes for about 5,800 milliliters. The total lung capacity is also equal to the vital capacity plus the residual volume. Factors such as gender, age, and body size influence the respiratory volumes and capacities. The first expiratory vital capacity is the rate at which lung volume changes during direct measurement of the vital capacity. It is a simple and clinically important pulmonary test. The individual inspires maximally and then exhales maximally as rapidly as possible into a spirometer. The spirometer records the volume of air expired per second. This test can help identify condition, conditions in which the vital capacity may not be affected but the expiratory flow rate is reduced. Good day everyone! I am April Ino Ardelinia and my topic for today is all about gas exchange. Gas exchange involves breathing, the transport of gases, and the receiving of tissue cells. Gas exchange is essential for human because energy metabolism requires oxygen that produces carbon dioxide. All of our cells need energy. We all know that in humans, gas exchange occurs when air enters the nasal cavity, it passes through the pharynx and larynx into the trachea. The trachea forks that forms two bronchi that branches into numerous bronchioles. Blood transport the gases with hemoglobin, which is the carrier of oxygen. Hemoglobin is a protein in red blood cells and it carries most of the oxygen in the blood. There are factors that affect gas exchange. First is the resp respiratory membrane thickness. Next is surface area. Next is partial pressure. Next is movement of gases in the lungs. And last is movement of gases in the tissue. Let us tackle first the respiratory membrane thickness. Respiratory membrane thickness affects when the thickness of respiratory membrane is doubled or tripled, then the rate of gas exchange will be decreased. Next is the surface area. The normal surface area is 70 square meter for adults, and it was decreased even small difference. Then the gas exchange will be affected 
adversely. Some reason of having a decreased surface area include the surgery in lungs, destruction of tissues due to the cancer, emphysema, and others. And it will reduce the volume of alveoli as well as a surface area for gas exchange. Next is the partial pressure. It affects when partial pressure has a great difference between the different area and the gas move rapidly. It also affects when the air is contact with the liquid. The gases in the air dissolves that lead to affect the partial pressure as well as gas exchange. Next is the movement of gases in the lungs. Movement of gases in the lungs affects gas exchange due to the different breathing activities. Increasing the breathing rate affects the respiration in our body as well as gas exchange because it makes PO2 higher and the PCO2 lower in the alveoli, unlikely in the normal amount of PO2 and PCO2 in alveoli. Last is the movement of gases in the tissue. Movement of gases in the tissue affects gas exchange by the flow of blood from the lungs into the tissue capillaries where the oxygen across the diffuses of CO2. That's all for today. I hope all of us have learned about this topic. Again, I am April Ina Ardelinia. I'm Diana Rose Ardi Lacruz from BS Ed 1D and I'm going to discuss the respiratory adaptions to exercise. Athletic performances increased because the cardiovascular and respiratory system became more efficient at delivering oxygen and picking up carbon dioxide. In most individuals, breathing does not limit performance because breathing can increase to greater extent that can cardiovascular function. During exercise, there is an increase in physical activity and muscle cells respire more than they do when the body is at rest. Our heart rate increases during exercise. The rate and depth of breathing increases. This makes sure that more oxygen is absorbed into the blood and more carbon dioxide is removed from it. The rate of breathing can be measured by counting the number of breaths in one minute the depth of breathing can be measured using a spirometer, a device that measures the volumes of air inhaled and exhaled. It is normal to get breathless during exercise. However, regular exercise can increase our strength and function of our muscles, making them more efficient. Our muscles will require less oxygen to move and they will produce less carbon dioxide. This will immediately reduce the amount of air you will need to breathe in and out for a given exercise. Training also improves our circulation and strengthens our heart. Exercise will improve our overall physical and psychological well-being. It can decrease the risk of developing other conditions such as stroke, heart diseases, and depressions. Regular exercise is also one of the most important interventions to prevent the onset of type to diabetes. I'm Diana Rose Ardila Cruz from BS Ed 1D and I'm going to discuss the respiratory system diseases. Allergies. Allergy is an immune system response to a foreign substance that not typically harmful to your body. These foreign substances are called allergens. They can include certain foods, pollen, or pet dander. Inhaling proteins such as dust, mold, and pollen can cause respiratory allergies in some people. These proteins can cause inflammation in our airways. It is characterized by symptoms of itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, nasal congestion, itching, and running nose. Asthma A chronic disorder. Asthma causes inflammation in our airways that can make breathing difficult. Our airway is narrow and make too much mucus. This can make breathing difficult and trigger coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath. 
Bronchitis. Inflammation and infection make your bronchial walls thicker. Bronchitis is an inflammation of the aligning of your bronchial tubes which carry air to or from our lungs. People who have bronchitis often cough of thickened mucus which can be discolored. Bronchitis may be either acute or chronic. Acute bronchitis is a very common and chronic bronchitis is more serious condition. It is a constant irritation or inflammation of the lining of the bronchial tubes often due to smoking. Chronic cough. A chronic cough is a cough that lasts 8 weeks or longer in adults or 4 weeks in children. A chronic cough is more than just an annoyance. A chronic cough can interrupt your sniff and leave your feeling exhausted. Severe cases of chronic cough can cause vomiting, lightheadedness, and even rib fractures. Pneumonia. An infection causes inflammation in our, our alveoli. Pneumonia is an infection that inflames the air sacs in one or both lungs. The air sacs may fill with fluid or purulent material, causing cough with phlegm or pus. Fever, chills, and difficulty breathing. Variety of organisms including bacteria, viruses, and fungi can cause pneumonia. Pneumonia can range in seriousness from mild to life-threatening. Tuberculosis Tuberculosis is a disease caused by bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis. The bacteria usually attack the lungs, but they can also damage the other parts of the body. Tuberculosis spreads through the air when a person with tuberculosis of the lungs or throat coughs, sneezes, or talks. It is usually affects your lungs but may also involve your kidney, spine, or brain. Lung cancer. Cells in your lungs change and grow into a tumor. Lung cancer is a type of cancer that begins in the lungs. Your lungs are two spongy organs in your chest that take in oxygen when you inhale and release carbon dioxide when you exhale. This often happens because of smoking or other chemicals you breathe in. It said that the number one cause of cancer is smoking cigarette. Cystic fibrosis. The disease is caused by a problem in your genes and gets worse over time. It causes lung infections that don't go away. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder that causes severe damages to the lungs, digestive system, and other organs in the body. Cystic fibrosis affects the cells that produce mucus, sweat, and digestive juices. Pleural effusion, sometimes referred to water on the lungs. It is the build-up of the excess fluid between the layers of the pleura outside the lungs. The pleura are thin membranes that line the lungs and the inside of the chest cavity and act to lubricate and facilitate breathing. Too much fluid builds up between the tissue that line your lungs and chest. Idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It is a type of lung disease that results in scaring of the lungs for an unknown reason. Over time, the scaring gets worse and it becomes hard to take in a deep breath and the lungs cannot take in enough oxygen. Your lung tissue becomes scared and can't work the way it should. Sarcoidosis is a disease involving abnormal collections of inflammatory cells that form lumps known as granulomata. The disease usually begins in the lungs, skin, or lymph nodes. Less commonly affected are the eyes, liver, heart, and brain. Any organ, however, can be affected. It is a tiny clumps of infl inflammatory cells called granulomas. Emphysema is a lung condition that causes shortness of breath. In people with emphysema, the air sacs in the lung or our alveoli are damaged. Over time, the inner walls of the air sacs weaken and rupture creating larger air spaces instead of many small ones. This reduces the surface of 
the lungs, and in turn the amount of oxygen that reaches your bloodstream. Hantavirus is an infectious disease characterized by flu-like symptoms that can progress rapidly to potentially life-threatening breathing problems. Several types of hantavirus can cause hantavirus pulmonary syndrome. They are carried by several types of rodents, particularly the deer mouse. You became infected primarily by breathing. Air infected with, with hantavirus that are shed in rodent urine and droppings. Influenza. It is a viral infection that attacks a respiratory system, your nose, throat, and lungs. Influenza, commonly called the flu, is not the same as stomach flu viruses that cause diarrhea and vomiting. Pleurisy is a condition in which the pleura, a membrane consisting of layer of tissue, that lines the inner side of the chest cavity and layer of tissue that surrounds the lungs become inflamed. Also called pleuritis. Pleurisy cause sharp chest pain that worsen during breathing. Pulmonary embolism is a blockage in one of the pulmonary arteries in your lungs in most cases. Pulmonary embolism is caused by blood clots that travel to the lungs from the legs or rarely other parts of the body. Respiratory syncytial virus causes infections of the lungs and respiratory tract. It is common and that it is common that most children have infected with the virus by age 2. Respiratory syncytial virus can also infect adults. In adults and older, healthy children Respiratory sexual symptoms are mild and typically mimic the common cold. Self-care measures are usually all that needed to relieve any discomfort. RSV can cause severe infection in some people, especially premature babies, older adults, infants, and adults with heart and lung disease, or anyone with a very weak immune system.